Thank you for joining us with the next video of this series. Today I'm going to go over the upstream process for PX4, QGC, and MAV SDK, which is the absolute 101 for beginners, contributors, and newbies to open source. Many of our community users have been downloading the code from GitHub, but don't quite understand or utilize the process of upstream. We will cover why upstream from the philosophical and theoretical point of view in another video later on. But I'll be focusing on explaining the practicality of how to do certain operations today. First, we will fork and then clone a repository from GitHub to your computer. Then we'll be going over making changes to the local version of the repo and uploading it back to GitHub. Lastly, we'll go over making a pull request so that your changes can be reviewed by the community and hopefully implemented into future versions. And that's your first step as a contributor. Okay, let's get right into this. The first thing I'm going to do is show you how to get access to the PX4 firmware, QGC, and MEV SDK. In your browser, you can head on over to github.com forward slash px4 forward slash firmware for the px4 firmware or github.com forward slash mavlink forward slash qgroundcontrol for qgc and lastly github.com forward slash mavlink forward slash mavsdk for mavsdk. These are all of the github repositories for all of the different components in the px4 flight stack. If you're not familiar with github.com, then I'd recommend heading over to lab.github.com for more information about various aspects with GitHub. Within the first browser tab, you will be able to see the PX4 firmware repository. And within there, you will be able to see code, issues, pull requests, and much more. We will be going over the first three. Okay. Let's say that you believe you can make some improvements and want to start contributing to the PX4 firmware. The first thing we need to do is fork the repository. At the top right you will see a button called Fork. Click that and you may see a dialog. It will ask you where you would like to fork this repository to. You can choose to fork it to your user repo or to an organization you are a part of. Once you have made your choice, it will take a few seconds to fork the firmware. You will then see a copy of the repo within your repository you chose. Great! You have just forked the PX4 firmware. Next, we will want to clone this repository to your local machine so you can start working with it in your IDE of choice. I'm going to show you how to clone via SSH, which will require you set up a key. If you haven't done so already, then please head over to lab.github.io first and come back when you're done. Alright, now let's clone the repo by clicking on the green clone button and then click use SSH if it's not already available. Inside here, you will see the code you need to clone the repo. Click the little clipboard button to the right of it. Now we need to bring up a terminal. If you're on macOS, you can hit Command plus Space to bring up Spotlight Search and type Terminal. Once you're inside the terminal, cd into your development directory, then type git clone and paste the link you just copied, then press Enter. With Windows, you will most likely have a git bash installed, and with Linux, well, you know what to do. Git will clone the repo to your local computer and create a folder you can use later. Okay, the repo is cloned, but we still need to add our upstream repo so we can do a pull request later on. Type cd firmware to go into the new repository directory. Now type git remote add upstream and paste the link from the clipboard again. However, we need to change it from our username to px4. If this is for QGC or MavSDK, then you would change it to MavLink. Now hit enter. You can check the change by typing git remote tech v to see upstream. 
Now we need to fetch upstream, and to do that, type git fetch upstream. Now we are set up to make changes to our local repo. Anytime you see that the main repo that you forked has been updated, we can merge upstream into our local repository so we have the most up-to-date code. To do this, simply type git merge upstream forward slash master. Then git push origin master to update the copy on GitHub. Right now it's not going to do anything because we just forked the latest version. Nice. Now let's say we want to make some changes to our local copy and later make a pull request. To do this we need to create a new branch. Do this by typing git checkout tack b new underscore branch underscore name. Make sure to use underscores between your name. If you type git branch you will see that you're now on the new branch. Now you can make the changes you wanted. For now, I'll just create a new file so you can see how this all works. Now we can type git status to see all the changes we have made to the repo. We then need to add these changes to our next commit by typing git add period. Then we will commit the changes by typing git commit tack m and in quotes, a message about these changes. Lastly, we need to push these changes to our forked copy of the repo on GitHub. To do this, you would normally just type git push. However, because this branch doesn't have a copy on GitHub, we need to set the upstream. To do this, type git push tack tack set tack upstream origin new branch name or the name that you made. If you forget about this step, then it will let you know. All your changes have been pushed to GitHub. Let's head over there now. Open up your browser again, and you will see a new notification stating that your new branch was recently pushed, and it will ask you if you would like to create a pull request. Let's click the button called Compare and Pull Request. You are then going to see a form that you need to fill out. It will have information inside it that you should follow to make it easier for the community to review your PR. Once you have filled out all of the information, then click Create Pull Request. That's it. You have now successfully created a pull request, and now you get to wait. Don't worry, it shouldn't take that long. Nice. I'm going to delete this PR because it isn't real. I don't want to start confusing the community with random PR requests. Okay. Now I want to show you what other repositories are available to contribute to. If we go to github.com forward slash px4, you will see that there are about 70 other repos you can fork, clone, edit, and PR to as well. If we head over to github.com forward slash mavlink, then you will see all of the different repos for Mav SDK and QGC. The process is the same for each one of the repos. Just fork, clone, edit, and PR. Make sure to follow the instructions when you make a PR for each repo though. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you for taking the time to watch how to upstream. The PX4 community is large and we have over 5,000 users in our Slack and the firmware repo has been forked over 9,900 times. We are one big, wide open source community and always welcoming new contributors. Please don't hesitate to jump in and start coding.